So very welcome. I hope you will find this presentation about BACOR applications in research interesting. Before we continue with SPR related examples, I'd like to illustrate with this slide that Cytiva has solutions that support the different steps of protein research that you may encounter during isolation and sequencing, cell culture, sample prep, purification and analysis. Today's presentation is on the analysis part. We will focus on label-free interaction analysis and cover different types of applications to give you a flavor of how BACOR SPR systems are applied in life science research. The studies in this presentation have been carried out on a BACOR X100 system, but are of course possible to carry out on our other systems too. Biological processes are real-time events, driven and regulated by dynamic interactions between key molecules. We will start with one example outlining inhibition of viral RNA protein interactions with allosteric ligands. Several ways of treating hepatitis C virus infections are currently explored, targeting different steps in the virus life cycle. This study investigated mechanisms involved in blocking RNA synthesis. For the BACOR assay, single-stranded RNA was bitinylated and captured on sensor chip CM5 via mobilized streptavidin to a level of 200 RUs. The sample, HCV polymerase, was injected with and without inhibitor and the interaction was monitored. To the right, you can see the resulting sensograms. The presence of either filibuvir or VX222, the two inhibitors tested in this study, clearly decreased the maximum signal level. This is interpreted as the inhibitors interfering with, but not completely blocking, the polymerase RNA interaction insights that may impact future selection and optimization of new allosteric HCV polymerase inhibitors. Another group in Spain used to use radioactivity in the assay, but has now transferred to BACOR X100. Laura Tomás Galardo at the Department of Molecular Biology and Biochemistry Engineering reports how BACOR X100 allowed her to analyze how a transcriptional regulator binds to its promoter and also visualize in real time the stability of the DNA protein complex in a very simple and fast way. From Italy, Professor Alessandro Arcovito states how we, he uses BACOR X100 mostly to study protein peptide and protein DNA interactions, and how their BACOR X100 has replaced the stopped flow technique and now is a central instrument in his laboratory. To quote him, I cannot imagine starting a scientific project without the support of strong kinetic data. We will now move over to application examples where BACOR systems were used to confirm and characterize interactions involved in cellular signaling. This study focuses on protein X and protein Y. To give a short background, protein Y is involved in several processes, processes in the body. It is synthesized as a precursor protein called proprotein Y, which undergoes post-translational modifications and intracellular processing before it's secreted from the cell in its mature form. Protein X is known to be upregulated in certain types of cancer. Protein Y has been used in attempts to block the function of protein X. However, this gave rise to serious side effects in the clinic. On this slide, we can see a clear interaction between proteins X and Y. This interaction was originally observed by PLA, that stands for Proximity Ligation Analysis. 
Now, bear in mind, proto interactions identified by PLA reflect the detection of a signal raised due to proteins in the vicinity of each other and does not necessarily reflect an actual interaction. Therefore, SPR was used to confirm and validate the potential interaction partners. As controls, it was demonstrated that the propeptide of protein Y interacted only weakly with protein X and protein Y, thereby also localizing the binding site for protein X to the domain corresponding to mature protein Y. Thus, the combined data demonstrates how BRCOREX100 can be used to confirm and characterize protein interactions hypothesized with other technologies. Biochemist Laura Acquasaliente at the University of Padua in Italy and her group are interested in discovering novel physiological connections that play pivotal roles in different scenarios such as coagulation, inflammation and degenerative diseases. She views BECOREX100 as an essential tool for characterizing new interactions in terms of affinity and stoichiometry. And she finds it simple to use with user-friendly software interface. In the next application example, we will learn how one can study mechanisms and kinetics of neural calcium sensor proteins. In the feature study by the group of Elena Danielsson at Uppsala University in Sweden, the interactions between colmodulin and calendrin with AKA P79 respectively were studied using SPR. The group also looked at the influence of calcium ions on these interactions. The target, aka P79, belongs to A kinase anchoring proteins involved in the organization and precision of intracellular signaling events. Here, aka P79 was immobilized on sensor chip CM5 at surface densities of 5 to 8,000 RU. The interaction between calendrin and AKP79 was somewhat complicated to address since no suitable regeneration condition could be established with a calcium-free buffer. Therefore, a single-cycle kinetics approach was chosen, as this type of assay does not necessarily require a regeneration step. To the left, you can see the resulting sensograms from the single-cycle kinetics experiment. Here, you can see that calendrin forms a stable complex with AKP79 in the presence and absence of calcium. In comp competition experiments, calmodulin was found to effectively block calendrin binding to AKP79 in the presence of calcium. How can we tell that from the middle sensograms? Well, looking at the middle figure, we can see that binding curve from injection of colmodulin in the presence of calendrin, shown in blue, do not overlay with the simulation of the theoretical signal under non-competitive conditions, shown as red dashed line. Instead, it overlays with the binding response obtained from injection of calmodulin alone, shown in green. The study confirms that calendrin and colmodulin interact with the target at overlapping binding sites, but exhibit different interaction characteristics, with colendrin being able to form a stable complex even in the absence of calcium. In summary, this study shows the importance of in-depth understanding of mechanisms and kinetics and that small variances in interaction patterns between proteins can have major functional differences. Flora Cosolino at the Seeing Biotechnology Institute in Italy is also using BECOREX100 to study protein ligand complexes. It provides her and her group with speed and simplicity of execution in comparison with older analytical techniques and gives them the opportunity to explore new fields of research. 
Now we will move over to monoclonal antibody and antigen variant interactions. When selecting candidate epitopes and monoclonal antibodies, or any other antibody-like molecule under investigation, analysis is commonly based on binding specificity and affinity. With SPR, you easily obtain binding kinetics, providing deeper insights and a mean to discriminate between candidates with, for example, similar affinity. In this study, the interaction of a monoclonal antibody was investigated against three variant forms of one antigen in order to distinguish any selection preferences. On a BECOR system like BECOR X100, there are two approaches for running a kinetics experiment, multi-cycle kinetics and single-cycle kinetics. Which approach you choose depends on your reagents and your preferences. They give the same results. Here, a single cycle kinetics experiment was run, and from the data to the right, you can see that only antigen variant number two showed binding to the immobilized antibody. Real time analysis and high sensitivity are also important instrument features when studying antibody antigen interactions. These features are, for example, appreciated by Professor Federico Aires da Silvia at the Faculty of Veterinary Medicine in Italy. He says, before BECOR X100, we used ELISA assays, which don't offer the high sensitivity of the assay and the capacity to measure antibody affinities. Start by understanding the target. Several papers to date have been using SPR to understand the structure and function and mode of action of COVID-19. This elegant study by Rapetol was published in Science last year. Back then, SARS-CoV-2 was called the 2019 novel coronavirus. Following structural determination by cryo-EM, they undertook biophysical studies to see how the spike protein bound the host cell receptor AC2 and how this interaction compared to the binding of AC2 to the SARS equivalent, also known as SARS-CoV-1. SPR experiment was performed on a BECOR X100 system in which his tagged spike proteins were coupled onto a sensor chip NTA and AC2 was injected in solution. The BECOR study revealed a clear difference in the kinetic profiling between AC2 to 2019 COVID compared to SARS COVID. To the left, you can see that AC2 formed a much more stable with the 2019 variant with affinity of 50 nanomolar compared to 326 26 for the SARS variant. Interestingly, these results led investigators to come up with a possible explanation for why the 2019 coronavirus spreads more readily from person to person. The work was further validated and showed the higher affinity results from sequence changes in the receptor binding domain, and this has been proposed to underlie the higher transmissibility of SARS-CoV-2. Avidity-based affinity enhancement using nanoliposome. And now we will move over to an example showing how an amplified SPR assay enabled low picomolar detection of biologically active neuregulin-1. Diagnostic and biomarker applications require low limit of detection LOD, to detect low concentrations of circulating biomarkers. In general, biosensor assays require high affinity interactions in combination with enzyme or fluorescent tag to get an acceptable limit of detection. However, this often requires extensive washing steps. Therefore, a SPR assay was developed leveraging 
multivalency to give signal amplification and affinity enhancement that might reach the requirements for LOD. The assay setup that you can see to the left involved capture of bidenylated antibody on a SA chip, followed by a first injection of NRG1 antibody or plasma, followed by a second injection of liposomes pre-mixed with the ARB-B4 receptor to optimize binding of capture material. The results, the SA surface enabled the full accessibility of ligand to liposome, providing improved sensitivity and lower non-specific binding, NSB in short. In comparison with two other approaches, the GeroLab and Single Molecule Counting, SMC, the enhanced SPR assay showed improved limit of quantification and equal or improved limit of detection. Finally, we wish to highlight some results from a BACOR X100 benchmarking study. The aim with this study was to provide data for straightforward comparison of BACOR systems in terms of assay setup, sample consumption, runtime, etc. At the BACOR R&D lab in Uppsala, we developed standardized RUND protocols for the chosen assays to make acid transfer from, for example, a BACOR 3000 to a BACOR X100 even easier. For the kinetics assay, we chose to run single cycle kinetics on all systems where possible, since that's the recommended approach in many situations these days. This slide shows the results from BACOR X100 and BACOR 3000. At the top, we compared kinetics with slow dissociation by measuring the interaction of TNF alpha to an anti TNF antibody capture on sensitive protein A. At the bottom, we compared kinetics with fast dissociation by measuring the interaction of the small molecule CBSA only 200 Dalton to immobilized carbonic anhydrase 2. In both assays, BACOR X100 proved better precision, faster run times, and lower sample and reagent consumption compared to BACOR 3000. We have now come to the end of this presentation. I hope you have enjoyed hearing how SPR can be used for different applications to understand the mechanism of action, prove a hypothesis and make dependable conclusions. And this regardless whether you work with proteins, DNA, peptides, small molecules, viruses or antibodies, or regardless whether they are available as purified samples or in serum. As you can see on this slide, BACOR X100 is also used for vaccine projects to quantify antibodies in serum, as reported by Leonor Bochades Carrasco, PhD in Spain, and to identify anti drug antibodies in sera of patients. Feliciana Real Fernandez, PhD, and Professor Paolo Rovero at University of Florence find BACOR X100 really interesting when the drug is an antibody difficult to detect with sandwich protocols. So with this, I hope we at Cytiva can help boost your protein research and enable the design of new and innovative studies in your lab. Thank you very much for listening.